James Donovan, Shoot for the Moon, The Space Race, and The Extraordinary Voyage of Apollo 11. Imagine exploring the history of humanity's extraordinary journey to the moon through the lens of the exciting space race. In A Shoot for the Moon, The Space Race, and The Extraordinary Voyage of Apollo 11, author James Donovan takes readers on an enthralling journey through the development and execution of the Apollo 11 mission. Through meticulous research, Donovan sheds light on the lives of key players such as Werner von Braun, the German rocket scientist who helped America achieve this cosmic feat, and astronaut Neil Armstrong, who became the first human to tread the lunar surface. The summary provided in this app unpacks the riveting accounts of technological advancements, political agendas, and human ambitions that led to one of humanity's crowning achievements, a giant leap for mankind. Surpassing the Soviets in Space Getting a person into space needed a powerful rocket, and Werner von Braun had the expertise America required. After World War II, the German rocket scientist joined NASA, leading to the creation of a capable rocket for space travel. Christopher Columbus Kraft Jr. tackled the flight plan, establishing a mission control center and serving as its first flight director. The Mercury 7, the best pilots in America, were selected as astronauts for the space program. Despite initial success by Soviet Yuri Gagarin, NASA persevered, leading to the successful launch of the first American astronaut, Alan Shepard. In the 1950s, when a powerful rocket was urgently needed to send humans to space, America sought out former enemy, Werner von Braun. Known for leading the German rocket program during World War II, Von Braun had the expertise to design rockets that could take humans into space. Realizing Germany's defeat was inevitable, Von Braun and his team escaped to America, where they were promptly welcomed with their much-needed rocket technology. With Von Braun's help, NASA built a powerful rocket but still needed a comprehensive flight plan to ensure the safe transport of astronauts to and from space. Enter Christopher Columbus Kraft Jr., a flight research engineer, who devised the Mission Control Center to efficiently manage space flights. Further, he established the role of a flight director and appointed himself the first one. The next challenge was designing a craft for the astronaut to sit in, which was eventually named the Flying Ashcan. With the rocket, flight plan, and spacecraft ready, NASA's greatest challenge remained, finding the right people to become astronauts. Given the inherent risks of space travel, the first astronauts needed to be skilled pilots, capable of performing under extreme pressure, and willing to face mortal danger. Identifying test pilots as ideal astronaut candidates, NASA established stringent selection criteria, including a minimum of 1,500 hours of flying time, an engineering degree, and a height limit of 5 feet 11 inches. A nationwide search found just 110 candidates who met the criteria, and after exhaustive interviews and tests, the final seven were chosen, christened as the Mercury 7. Despite having their astronauts, rockets, and spacecraft ready for space exploration, NASA faced a major setback on April 12, 1961, when Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to reach space. The USSR's achievement momentarily eclipsed NASA's progress, but the Americans refused to give up. On May 5, 1961, with 45 million Americans watching on live television, Alan Shepard made history as the first American to reach space. Shepard's successful mission spurred America's passion for space exploration. The five subsequent piloted Mercury missions were all successful, further propelling America's ambition to surpass the Soviets in the space race. Project Gemini, Moon Mission Prelude In 1961, President John Kennedy set an ambitious goal before Congress, land a man on the moon, and bring him home safely, by the end of the decade. NASA, despite struggling with existing limitations, was tasked with this monumental challenge. Project Gemini was born out of this audacious vision, and its 12 successive missions tested crucial technology and procedures for the moon mission, preparing the way for the historic Project Apollo. When President John Kennedy declared his ambitious goal of sending an American to the moon by the end of the 1960s, NASA had barely scratched the surface of what such an endeavor would entail. 
Nevertheless, the enormous $1.62 billion budget approval by Congress in 1962 demonstrated the commitment and willingness of the nation to reach for the stars. To make Kennedy's proclamation a reality, NASA needed to develop a plan, the solution was Project Gemini. Project Gemini represented a quantum leap from Project Mercury, with its array of advanced rockets and spacecraft. The powerful rockets were designed to propel the Gemini spacecraft far beyond mere Earth orbit. Measuring 18 feet long and 10 feet wide, the spacecraft weighed between 7,100 and 8,350 pounds, with room for two astronauts. To navigate through space, it was equipped with rocket thrusters and a basic onboard computer called the Gemini Guidance Computer, primarily used for guidance and navigation. This expansion in technology required new talent, and NASA's ranks swelled with fresh blood. Among the new faces were Neil Armstrong, Tom Stafford, Ed White, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, all of whom would go on to play critical roles in the upcoming moon mission. The goal of Project Gemini wasn't to reach the moon but to build a solid foundation by testing and refining various technologies and procedures crucial for the ultimate lunar endeavor. Over the course of 12 missions, Project Gemini explored a range of challenges, spacecraft maneuverability, the human body's endurance in space, spacewalks, lunar landing, and return strategies. One key innovation was the lunar bug, a separate smaller craft that would transport astronauts from the main spacecraft to the lunar surface and back. This concept added an entirely new layer of complexity and required extensive testing to validate its feasibility. The final test of Project Gemini was Gemini 8, a pivotal mission piloted by Neil Armstrong and David Scott. This mission aimed to demonstrate successful docking between two crafts, as an unmanned, bug craft was sent into space, and Gemini 8 was subsequently launched to locate and dock with the drifting lunar vehicle. However, the mission faced perilous circumstances when the two connected crafts began spinning uncontrollably, subjecting the astronauts to extreme g-forces. Scott lost consciousness, but Armstrong's determination and skill enabled him to regain control of the spacecraft, averting potential catastrophe. In overcoming the final hurdle with Gemini 8, NASA had successfully shown that the technologies and methodologies needed for a lunar landing and return were viable. The substantial groundwork laid by Project Gemini was now complete, paving the way for the next grand stage, Project Apollo, the iconic moon mission that would forever etch the names of Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins into the annals of human history. Race to the Moon A pivotal moment in history, Apollo 11 pushed the boundaries of human capabilities and reignited a sense of awe at outer space. Following the tragic Apollo 1 disaster, NASA persevered for more than nine months before manned spaceflight commenced again. Through relentless testing and exacting preparation, astronauts Michael Collins, Buzz Aldrin, and Neil Armstrong were chosen to man the Apollo 11 mission. Pushed to their limits, these astronauts spent months memorizing every possible maneuver, calculating countless potential problems, and conducting ceaseless practice to ensure perfection in their unprecedented mission to the moon. Rising from the ashes of the Apollo 1 disaster on February 21, 1967, NASA regrouped with an unparalleled determination to pursue their spacefaring ambitions. Nine months after the tragic event, manned spaceflight rebounded, and NASA wasted no time in rigorously testing equipment and procedures to guarantee the safety of future missions. Apollo 7, the program's first manned mission, verified the spacecraft's flight behavior in Earth's orbit. Breaking barriers, Apollo 8 sent astronauts to the moon without landing, orbiting it for 20 hours. In preparation for the monumental Apollo 11, Apollo 10 underwent a full-dress rehearsal, simulating a lunar landing by sending an unmanned lunar module to the surface. As history knows, Apollo 11 marked humanity's first attempted moon landing. Michael Collins, Buzz Aldrin, and Neil Armstrong formed the chosen trio, with Armstrong selected as the mission's leader and first person to walk upon the lunar surface. A profound honor, it came attached with relentless training to ensure that these astronauts were prepared for anything. Training for 14 hours a day, six days a week, Collins, Aldrin, and Armstrong underwent grueling practice to perform every maneuver in each phase of the mission. 
they committed to memory countless switches, toggles, gauges, dials, lights, and levers, assuring preparation for any situation that might arise. The Lunar Surface Mission's final stage was assigned to Aldrin and Armstrong. To perfect their redocking with the Apollo spacecraft in an aircraft hangar, they spent hours maneuvering full-sized replicas of the crafts, suspended from the ceiling by cables. By the launch date of July 16, 1969, the astronauts had honed their abilities to a fine edge. On that fateful day, at 4.15 a.m., Deke Slayton, director of flight crew operations, knocked on the astronauts' bedroom doors to relay the good news, it's a beautiful day, your go. For mankind, it was an unforgettable day, and for the astronauts on Apollo 11, it marked the culmination of their grit, determination, and extraordinary preparation. The lessons learned from Apollo 1's tragedy had fueled NASA's unyielding quest for success, ultimately resulting in one of humanity's most astonishing achievements. Apollo 11's triumph will forever inspire generations to come, proving that anything is possible with dedication, resilience, and unwavering perseverance. Journey to the Moon On July 16, 1969, Apollo 11 astronauts began their historic journey to the moon. After overcoming initial challenges, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set foot on the lunar surface, conducted experiments, and returned safely to Earth, leaving an everlasting impact on human history. On a fateful morning, three astronauts prepared for a life-changing mission. They were Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, the men about to embark on the renowned Apollo 11 mission. As morning turned to day, the astronauts were readied in their space gear and made their way to the towering launch tower. Once aboard the spacecraft, they performed final checks to prepare for liftoff. When the countdown reached T-9 seconds, the rocket's massive engines ignited, and the legendary Apollo 11 mission was thrust into the sky. After enduring several transitions between the Saturn's first, second, and third stages, the spacecraft finally reached orbit. Apollo 11 was now well on its way to the moon. As the spacecraft looped around Earth, the astronauts prepared for the lunar journey. Michael Collins initiated a continuous barbecue roll to protect Apollo 11 from solar radiation. After the tumult of launch, the crew enjoyed a brief respite, dining on dehydrated meals while floating in zero gravity. With no natural day or night cycle, they relied on their bodily rhythms to rest, secured in sleeping bags suspended in midair. Three days later, Apollo 11 arrived at the moon's orbit. Armstrong and Aldrin prepared the Eagle lunar lander, suited up, and detached from the mothership, leaving Collins behind. As they descended, alarms blared, signaling an unknown issue. In a moment of utter suspense, mission control confirmed they could proceed, the alarm was not critical. Guided by Aldrin's data readouts, Armstrong manually controlled the Eagle's descent. Struggling with the lunar dust cloud kicked up by the lander, Armstrong touched down on the moon's surface, a milestone silently acknowledged as both astronauts stared at each other in bewildered amazement. They requested permission to exit the Eagle earlier than scheduled, and mission control agreed. Dressed in their spacesuits and with equipment at the ready, the astronauts depressurized the cabin and opened the hatch. Armstrong led the way, slowly climbing down the ladder before activating a TV camera that would beam their historic first steps to more than 530 million people worldwide. On July 20, 1969, at 9.56 p.m., Armstrong stepped onto the lunar surface and uttered the immortal words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong explored the moon's fine powdered surface, making way for Aldrin to join him 20 minutes later. They admired the otherworldly terrain, walked a short distance from the eagle, and planted the American flag as a testament to their monumental achievement. With just an hour left for their moonwalk, the astronauts busied themselves taking photographs, collecting lunar rock samples, and conducting experiments. Having completed their lunar tasks, it was time to leave the barren landscape behind and reunite with Collins aboard the orbiting mothership. Apollo 11's triumphant journey home began shortly after, as the crew headed back to Earth. On July 24, they returned to Earth's atmosphere, plunged through the sky, and descended into the Pacific Ocean, 
13 miles from their designated recovery ship. At long last, the men who walked on the moon were back home, forever cementing their position in human history. James Donovan's Shoot for the Moon is a captivating portrayal of the tumultuous era of the space race, culminating in the legendary Apollo 11 mission. With detailed coverage of events, technological marvels, and personal struggles, this book summary sheds light on the remarkable human endeavor that culminated in the first manned lunar landing. Readers will walk away with a deeper understanding of the underlying political, social, and personal motivations that fueled this extraordinary voyage. Through tales of perseverance, sacrifice, and innovation, this book serves as a reminder that, with determination and courage, the impossible can become possible. A testament to the limitless potential of human ingenuity and ambition, Shoot for the Moon, offers readers a profound appreciation of the journey that united a nation and captivated the world.